Who are you? I'm Yanis from Falls. Yanis, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thanks for having me. Right off the bat, Yanis, I want to say thank you for repping Skinny Puppy all these years. Sweet. You love the pup. Tell me about your repping of the pup over the years. I got into Skinny Puppy when I was probably 15. I got pretty obsessed with Ogre and the whole cast of characters, Al Jorgensen and Ministry and everything. Um, I think the first track I really got into is Assimilate. Um, but then, like, yeah, I obsessively collected everything. I used to go to a record fair in Oxford and, like, try and scout down the vinyl. And uh, there wasn't really many people where, uh, in Oxford that knew Skinny Puppy. And I wrote Skinny Puppy on my shoes, my school shoes, and people thought it was pretty weird. I love that you mentioned it in interviews. And also, Skinny Puppy are from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Yeah. So I thought I'd further give you a uh, Skinny Puppy CD with some more tracks of The Pup. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yanis, I have another gift for you right here. Pastor T.L. Barrett. Oh, I like it. Oh, really? Oh, that's sweet. Who, Jim James has said, quote, has put out one of the most important LPs ever made. I think you were into the Pastor T.L. Barrett, weren't you? You had some YouTube links to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a ship is like, that's basically what I've heard. I I heard some of this stuff off a Good God um, gospel compilation and Like a Ship, and there's another track um, called Yes, God is Real. That's by the Gospel Comforters. But that's, that's, that's a beautiful track. Quote, what is a mental, moral, and music meltdown? Um, it was our last show here. <laughs> Baboom, at the Commodore Ballroom. Yeah. It, we'd been on tour, I think, we'd been on tour for a long time, and um, it, things had just got a little crazy, and the shows had got a bit feral. Um, and we overstayed our welcome on stage, I think, by a good hour. And there was spitting. There was supposedly an uh, act of violence that I don't really remember about. But I know that for the next week, as we proceeded down the west coast of the States, um, the, somebody at the Commodore Ballroom had <laughs> forwarded on warnings about our band to the rest of the venues we went to. So we got kind of, we were met with raised eyebrows everywhere we went. Looking at the stage there, I think you were chucking a lot of stuff off the stage. Were your bandmates trying to stop you? Do your bandmates ever try to stop you? Like you're climbing up a speaker stack, you're chucking stuff, you're chucking puke. What do the bandmates do? Uh, I don't know. They definitely don't try and hold hold me back. Um, there's one, there was one time in London where it got a little bit out of control. I think I tried to pull down Walter's bass amp. and it, would, it, it I think it depends what spirit it's done in. If it's done with... with um, this, it, it can turn dark, and when it turns dark, that's when I think the bandmates worry. In the true tradition of Oxford music, Tallulah Gosh! Tallulah Gosh, a, a band that I've read a lot about but don't really ever um, follow at all. But that, that's one of the bands that was always written about in Night Shift a lot. And the Candy Skins and Dust Ball, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Candy Skins uh, recorded in Shonk Studios. My first ever demo I recorded was there. They were a great band. Tragic kind of story as well of the, the fickle nature of the music industry as well where they kept like having just bad luck but you know they had a lot of bad luck against them um and then dust ball as again like he the singer from dust ball and then they became dive dive he was like he used to come to our rehearsals and he really encouraged me a lot he used to also give me free videos at the video rental store he worked at he's a good guy i don't think we'd be playing music without him probably what kebab shop does david ma work in he used to work he used to work at a place called shish um, and it was in London, it was kind of in Shoreditch. I don't even know if it's there anymore, but the speciality was Afghan chicken, um, which was also a haircut you could get next door at the at the, at the combined barbershop. And um, yeah, so when he was like, when we met him, he worked there um, because he's Australian, so that was his sponsor for Visa. But he, when he shot all the first videos for us, he was like, he would shoot a video and then he would go back and he would just like make some donna for people. That's awesome. It's great to have a guy like that. One stop shopping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, haircut, video, and, and dinner. Yeah, and so when you're traveling and you run to the airport, you sometimes encounter security guards. But Irish security guards love you guys? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I had um, a debauched night in Dublin after a show, and um, uh, I, I, didn't, I woke up and I didn't know where I was, and we had to fly. To As it should be. Yeah, exactly. And we had to fly for the first time to the States. I hadn't been, here, uh, been to the States before. Um, yeah, and basically I was missing my flight and I ran through and then as I was running through the security guard was just like great show last night and just took me, just winged me straight through to the gate. It was one, definitely one of the better moments of, it was one of the bigger perks of being in a band. And how about flipping to maybe not so great moment in Chicago? Why did you fight your merch guy? 
Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had, um, again, I had a, like, I think that was a wild show. Um, there was a lot of whiskey that night and I went out and I actually had a fight with my girlfriend um, and I just went crazy and um, uh, I ended up like, I, uh, they were I don't remember that much of this, but I remember the next day our bass player Walter told me that I was at one point I was like in the middle of the road with like traffic coming by and I was sort of just like, I was kind of almost, you know, I was just oblivious to traffic. I trashed some bar stool in front of some fans that had been at the show and they were less than impressed. And then I threatened to, uh, apparently I said I'd chop, <laughs> I'd chop our merch guy's head off and then he threatened to quit the next day. But I made it up to him. It was definitely not a highlight of my character. And then you woke up and an earring had been ripped off your face. Did you get an earring ripped off your face at one time? How did that happen and how much did that hurt? That was separate. That was in a fight in Red. We got in a fight in Reading, which is kind of a town near Oxford. It's pretty grisly in Reading. It's like, it's, you know, a lot of British city centres, it's about... There's an undercurrent of violence to them, particularly on the weekend. That's like it feels like it's the culmination of a lot of people's nights. And I think we just crossed the wrong guys. Um, we were on tour with a band called Cut Off Your Hands at the time from New Zealand, um, and they were bad. They were like they they like to whip up trouble because in New Zealand, what's the worst that's really going to happen to you? Uh, but the worst that happened to me then was I got yeah I got an, uh, a labret or not labret piercing. Uh, I can't remember what it's called there, but the inner ear bit like pulled out. It was pretty sore. Who is Rumpel Hershon? I don't know. Where is that from? That's you, isn't it? Rumpel Hershon? Isn't that your nickname? Um, kind of. Where did you find that out from? It's you, though. Rumpel Hershon. Isn't it like your cat or something like that? And then you're, it's, There's Rumpel Hershon. Those are two significant names. Yeah, they are. They are two significant names. So Rumpel, um, I, my first gerbil was called Rumpel, like short for Rumpel Stiltskin. Um, it was actually, unfortunately, eaten by my brother's gerbil. Um, it was just sad. Um, and then my mother's... Gerbil on gerbil action? Yeah, they ate each other, yeah. It was dark. Yeah, uh, Did you watch that happening? No, I didn't. I, I basically my my they were in my brother's room. My brother went away for a few days. I was young. I and I was like twelve years old, and I went in, uh, and I had forgotten to feed them for like a day. And I went in, and uh, um, my brother's one had eaten my one. It was pretty sad. Um, and my mother's name's Hershon. So I don't know where Rumpel Hershon. Maybe it's like my porno name or something. Baboom, and you are Yanis of Foles. Foles quote. Decadence, debauchery, and indulgence. Um, touring. Actually, what I'm referring to are the May student balls in Oxford. Oh, of which there was a, like a recent meltdown, apparently. Yeah, I heard that they were going to have like a live shark in a tank, yeah. and as well, they were going to charge like two hundred forty-five dollars. Is it usually that debauchery? Uh, I mean, they are they are pretty out of control. I've never actually been to one of them, but I've got a lot of friends that have been to um, to one of the college balls. They're expensive, and then they're like kind of high profile. and They get crazy. There's a secret one um, that's called Piers Gaveston. Um, that's definitely if you're in Oxford and you want to go to something that's like special that's the one to go to it's like invite kind of only you have to find out about it you don't know where you're going until the day and um, I shouldn't probably even be talking about it what happens when you get there like what makes it special do they have to live shark and tank or what makes it special no it's just super I think it, it gained notoriety in the 80s because a lot of like MPs kids and stuff like uh, politicians kids would go there and the only rule is no phones um, so basically just anything goes on there. And like Piers Gavison was Edward II's lover, I think. Um, so it's, it's in, I think it started off as a kind of like, you know, like an orgy, basically, back in the day. But it's evolved into something that's a bit more, well, I don't even know if it is a bit more, this, yeah, it's just crazy, it's fucked up. So that raises the question, how fools played an orgy before? Um, no. What's the closest you've got to playing an orgy? Oh, I don't know where that would be. I don't know, maybe Japan or something? I don't know. What happened there? A sushi orgy? Yeah, sushi orgy with Yakuza tattooists Yeah, at Fuji Rock. What's the Pitt Rivers Museum like in Oxford? They have like shrunken heads there. Have you been there? Yeah, it's incredible. It really is. I think it's got the largest ethnographic collection of artifacts in the world. Um, it's not that big in terms of size, but they've got like drawers and drawers and drawers of stuff that you can just pull out and look. And they have, yeah, shrunken heads from, I don't know if it's the Yanomamo tribe and the Amazon, but they've got a collection of shrunken heads. They've got amazing Amazonian jewelry made from like whole toucans and strange like exotic birds, Amazonian birds. Um, they have a bagpipe that's from my village, in, but it's from the 19th century. Um, they've got everything there. Just curious, do you know Aviva Yael at all? Yes, I do, yeah. How do you know Aviva Yael? Um, we made a record. How do you know Aviva Yael? 
I have to know about the falls. Um, yeah, I know Aviva. Um, she's a great girl. Uh, we met her when we were making our record in New York, uh, the first record, and uh, we would we ended up uh, going to a lot of like rooftop parties in Williamsburg at the time. It was kind of exciting there back then. Um, and yeah, we just met her there, and then she's David Cross's niece, right? Something like that. And uh, yeah, and then we just stayed friends ever since. Giannis, lastly here, are you still a soap dodger? What's that mean? I mean? Bizarre magazine called you a soap dodger. That sounds very, that sounds like, that's uh, defaming, isn't it? That's libelous, probably. Yeah, why did they call you a soap dodger? I don't know, because I'm grubby or something? Is that what it's going to mean? It was something about when you're recording one of your records, you didn't shower for 11 days. Oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. I think it's got, like, it got a little bit Howard Hughes in, um, um, Howard Hughes without the uh, achievements of Howard Hughes in, uh, when we made Tot Life in Sweden. We were living in the studio, and, um, there was just, it was just, like, I just ate pad thai uh, for 11 days straight and didn't shower, and, um, obsessively worried about the record, and, um, almost uh, had a punch up with the producer and uh, it was just a dark time but it didn't get it wasn't like Nebuchadnezzar level of like like it, I was still relatively hygienic yeah, it's okay to dodge the soap in those yeah. circumstances if you're making a record it should be like that it's meant to be like heart of darkness I still brush my teeth thanks so much for your time Yanis anything else you want to add to the people out there at all mm, not really uh, just scratch that itch well thanks so much Yanis of Falls keep on rocking in the free world and do Doodaloo do. Boom boom.